Arkansas, big win against four Tennessee, 19 to 14 Arkansas Razorbacks and Sam Pittman. Again, you want to talk about a guy who was on the hot seat ending up this season. They don't lose that game against Oklahoma State. They don't lose against Texas A&M. They're undefeated. You look at this team completely different. I think my first takeaway, Cody, is this was the game and he ended up hurt, which, by the way, the running game stepped up when he was hurt with I think Thompson was the quarterback that came in. Yeah. I mean, this is the game we saw Taylor Green as the passer more than the runner. 19 mm-hmm. or 27, 266 yards. Talk to me what you saw. What was your biggest takeaway from this? I thought it was um, – I think Arkansas's defense is what surprised me the most. And obviously the uncomfortability of Nico and Iamaliaba. Man. Like, man, like I don't understand how we don't get a pass off on the last play of the game. And I know, like, there was a lot of stuff that kind of led up to that moment. But your defense and your wide receivers did every, and you did everything to get into that position. Give your guys a shot. Give your guys a chance to win that football game and get out of there, escape with a win, and you run out of bounds. Like, I, yeah, I don't man. know. I, I, it just felt like such an anti, like, literally, I was watching it because, like, I was flipping between games and I saw the score and the time. So I flipped right over to the Tennessee game and it was like, I got to see like the deep ball. Ridiculous, by the way. Third oh, and two, unreal, rolling out unreal, left, unreal, sling bro. it to his right, and then a great catch by Thornton, too. Absolutely. It's like, so that was like the first play that I got to see. And then it was like, and you're like, oh boy, here we go. Oh, here we go. And then incomplete down the middle. And then I want to say one more play. And then it was this last one. Yeah. And it was like, did that just happen? Like, did he really just run? Like, not like this. Like, mm. <laughs> I'm My, like, throw it up. Yeah, bro. You got to throw it somewhere. I don't even know where. I I, I haven't just seen the all it. 22 film. I haven't seen the alternative film. But to your point, I agree there. I also think one thing, too, was I don't know if it was a Josh Heupel thing or if it was a Nico thing. I felt like the two plays before that, he was a little too aggressive to try to get to the end zone. There was like sure. 25, 28, 30 seconds left. Um, I want to say when they crossed the 50, two timeouts. I think the first one, you're right, over the middle. The second one, he missed another guy where, by the way, the out on the left side by the tight end would have been open. You get yourself to the 10. And then on that last play, too, I get you're trying to go downfield for the you know the wide open guy. He had a tight end on a wheel route on the sideline on the left side. He hits him on the out route. He gets the 10 in the yard line. If he hits him up, hits him on the five, maybe he gets down. He's got three, four, five seconds left. Instead, he holds onto the ball. And it's just, it stinks because we expect more from him. We saw him against Oklahoma, which by the way, he didn't play that great, which could have led over to this game. Maybe they saw something in Nico and they said, you know, I think we can expose him there. Credit to Arkansas. But man, you just wonder what a kid like this going into Florida, another hostile environment. Now it's do or die for them. Thinking about a redshirt freshman quarterback, all these seniors coming in, you know, the James Pierce juniors of the world, the Brew McCoys of the world, like, trying to get them to the CFP or SEC championship. Like, Squirrel White. Squirrel White's, I think he's a junior. He's maybe a senior, but still year. an upperclassman. Yeah, he yeah, could be going to the gone. NFL draft. But yeah. um, one thing, too, and I want you to kind of talk about this because you're obviously the play caller, offensive genius yourself, but I felt like Nico never really pushed the ball down the field like Except he did against ben, against, like against Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma, he had those two, the slant route, and then he had the one to Brew McCoy or maybe two to Brew McCoy. But other than that, they didn't push down the field that much. But this game specifically, you're right. Arkansas did something that confused him, and he looked frightened in the pocket. And there were sometimes he held the ball for like five, six, seven, eight seconds, would get sacked. And it's like, well, Nico, like, you got to find somebody. So talk to me what you saw there. I just felt like I saw a bunch of curl, flat routes, screens, checkdowns. Is that a hypo thing or is that Nico thing or maybe just both? You know what? What I noticed was indecision. Because to me, if a quarterback, any quarterback that I coach or I train, I always try and give them. Like, okay, here's the grand scope of the play. This is what we want to do. Mm. If this is taken away, we go here. If this is taken away, we go here. If this is taken away, we check the ball down. If that's taken away, we run. So it's like you have, you kind of have the pressure releases. If they blitz, we're going to throw this hot. If they don't blitz and they drop into coverage, we're going to throw this. If they go cover zero, but don't really blitz and they kind of hang back, we're going to throw this and take a shot. Mm. You know, if it's man, we're going to throw this. If it's zone, we're going to throw this. It just felt like, Arkansas did a great job disguising pre-snap exactly what it is that they were doing, which then forced Nico to kind of 
pat the ball, pat the ball. And by then, pass rush had closed down running lanes, so he wasn't able to get out and use his legs like he did um, against Oklahoma so effectively. So I think that was one of the things that I really noticed was just the indecision of Nico in the pocket when reads number one, number two, and maybe even number three were taken away. Like, throw the swing route to your running back, get five or six, and let's get back on the ball and go set. Because what I noticed, too, is it, it like – Three and when you're a high powered blur offense like Josh Heupel, three and outs absolutely kill your momentum. Similar mm. to like what we were talking about with Vandy and Alabama. When like little different type of style, but in terms of like that up tempo style of offense, if you go three and out, there's no rhythm to your game. And all those offenses that go super fast, when you think about like Oregon back in the day, when you think about um uh maybe like Oklahoma when they had like Sam Bradford and like Baker Mayfield. Um, Kyler Murray, um, Texas A&M when they had Johnny Manziel, those like blur offenses, like they really have to find a rhythm and they have to get first downs, first down, first down, convert, convert, convert. Now you take a deep shot. So I think that kind of plays into what you were talking about is they weren't able to really push the ball down the field because they weren't threatening Arkansas in the short and intermediate game enough to allow those linebackers to move up, those safeties to move up and those corners to move up Mm. and then allow them to just drop and force Nico to take the underneath throws throughout the rest of the football game. Arkansas blitzed a ton in the second half, too. Blitzed a ton in the second half. They also were down 14-3 heading into that fourth quarter. And, I mean, for Arkansas to do that, on Arkansas's credit, I think they've really had a good three-headed duo, but tri- trio, whatever you want to call it, and Taylor Green, Jaquinnon Jackson, and their wide receiver, Armstrong. By the way, who maybe C.D. Lampart 2.0, I mean, it exactly looks like C.D. Lamb. Attack the ball like C.D. Lamb. The colors were like Oklahoma. My buddy Noah was talking to me. He's like, yeah, I just feel like I'm watching Tennessee, Oklahoma again, like right. last week, <laughs> two weeks ago. Like, it's the same color scheme on the road and stuff like that, too. But I think you've got to get a lot of credit to just to Quinn and Jackson. They ran the ball 44 for 134. Um, I mean, you just an all for Arkansas just to convert a game plan. And like I said, like, Taylor Green just looked more like a passer tonight. And, and he used his legs when he needed to. I just felt like. Tennessee was just always on their toes and didn't know what to, you know, how to stop one or the other. Possession time was pretty even. And uh, yes, look sir. at Arkansas, man. I mean, four and one, shoot, or four and two, I think. Sorry, four and two, three and two, um, four and two. But uh, yeah, big win for Arkansas, man. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see them beating them like that. And I don't know how Tennessee lost. And to be honest, I don't know with this staff. And I, I love Hypo and I love Nico, but. I just don't know if they can overcome this and continue to get back to where we thought they were. Paul Feinbaum said it really, really well. Tennessee has not figured out a way to travel and be able to have their game travel on the road. South Carolina um, a couple years ago, too, with Hennon Hooker. You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, by the way, shout out. Uh, when Taylor Green went down, Malachi Singleton, the game-winning rushing touchdown all at home. That was super impressive to me. Mm. I know I know they didn't really ask him to throw it, but he made a lot of good decisions in the RPO zone read game um, as they drove down for that game winning touchdown. Um, so shout out to you, Malachi Singleton. That was pretty cool, man. Cool to watch you uh, pull that game out. Yeah, I didn't mind. I didn't mind the decision either for Tennessee to let him score. Like, I didn't mind that. I thought I was a, I that was a good play. Yeah. OK, we're going to give it to Nico and try to score here versus kind of let the, the clock run and have him get a field goal. So, um, yeah, Arkansas big win. Um, I'm excited to see again, how they compete <laughs> later on. I mean, the sec just looks deeper and deeper. 